I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore Boat and Kayak, and you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com. In this video, we'll be jigging with 3-ounce SNS John Skinner Swing Hook Fluke Bucktails. One foot above the bucktail is a Tsunami Glass Minnow silicone skirt model, and I'll have links to all of the gear in the description of the video. Okay, the last video I posted, which was just several days ago, I was out on the water with my daughter Katie. I'm out today with my son Michael. So uh, we're out on the same grounds, but boy, it's a lot crowded. Got a lot of boats uh, all around, and it is windy. Um, although the wind's not going to stay up, it is going to drop down. But for now, it's windy. You can see we've got that drift sock out. This is uh, our first drift, and uh, yeah, we really need that drift sock. If that was not there to slow us down, uh, we would not be able to stay near the bottom without using a lot of weight. Uh, right now, we're able to stay down um, with three ounces, and you know, we're running like 50 to 60 feet of water. Uh, but that 15 pound test braid is cutting the water fine. And hey, first drift into a fish already. thing about once you have some marks on your GPS, you know. Yeah, so this is the fourth time that I've worked this spot now, and uh, so I've got some marks on the GPS, and it just makes it a lot easier to be able to go out and uh, have some starting points and know where you've caught fish before. Look at a squiddy spitting out. Zero point seven, and we are right in the middle of like six fish marks. Oh, that's a fluke. That is definitely a fluke. So the one thing about these rods is you gotta like think about keeping pressure on them. They're not like the limpier ones that we use. These are easier for the fish to get slack and back off. So just always make sure you keep cranking. I think that's a short too. Is the right species. Yeah, it's a short. Yeah, swing them up. So we haven't been getting a lot of short fluke here. The legal uh the minimum limit is 19 inches there's a four fish bag limit i'd say roughly 70 percent of the fish that we've been catching are over that 19 inch limit uh, we don't catch high numbers but we get some quality here there's some nice fish yeah right there Nice, but I don't think I want to live there. I mean, okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, there's a keeper. Yeah, I'm all right, because I got the net right next to me. It's not a cow, but it's it's a, one of those 20 inchers. Well, now he's coming up easier, but still, I think he's a keeper for sure. Yeah, I'm going to swing him. If I lose him, I lose him. Yeah, I think he's short anyway. Oh, sorry. That's three fluke on this drift. Uh, I just said that, you know, this is a good drift speed right in between all my marks. And we catch three of them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Keep the 
pressure on that thing. Yeah. Just keep a bend in the rod. I don't see any fluke shakes yet though. Maybe a foul hook sea robin? I'm just not seeing any shakes. Huh? Oh, I thought I saw a shake there. Just keep it, just keep it bent. Oh, that's a fluke. Yeah, all right, that's a good one. And you're gonna have boat waves, so just keep that rod bent through the boat waves. Oh, see, you dropped them. I know, well, what happens, yeah. Just get back down, just drop down. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, no, I, I, I saw it was definitely, that was definitely quality fluke, there's no question about it. And you set the hook well, I mean, you bent the rod over on the fish to, to start, but you know, sometimes it's just not hooked well either. I got him now. This is a quality fish. You know what I felt was uh, slack. Okay, yeah, you can come up and, and get the net, but you got to reel your line in. And if you're not up in time, I'm gonna grab it myself. So. so. All right, drop that thing in the boat and get the net. Let's go. That's it. Nice beauty. It's probably the one you lost. <laughs> that surprised me. It was back to back. That's why I made sure I got back down there in a hurry. I mean, you know, you see it on the video. They follow and they follow, so you never know. Okay, when he dropped that fish, uh, that's why I said, you know, get right down, get, you know, get right back to the bottom. And the reason why, for, hey, first of all, this fish is swimming away with the camera right now. So that's just a little side bit. Um, these are very aggressive, nasty fish. Um, the reason I said to him, you know, get back down, and I made sure I got down in a hurry is because I firmly believe from having watched a lot of underwater video that... If you drop a hooked fish, just get right back down. There's an excellent chance that that fish is going to come back. All right, so this guy, um, he's not actually hooked because I've got a hook protector on the hook. I don't want to catch them on the camera rig. But uh, this guy is eating the bait. Uh, he's gone after now the bucktail rig. The bait has come out of his mouth, and he went and he got it again. But we're going to watch as this fish... Um, has the bait come out of his mouth over and over because I'm drifting up in the boat and this fish is being pulled along and you know at times it struggles against the rod and um, yeah so the hook comes out because I've got the point covered but repeatedly this fish goes back after it over and over now this is you know a nice example with clear water where I'm able to show this but I've watched many many hours of underwater video and this is what I see, um, you know, if you miss a fluke or um, you know, a fluke also called summer flounder in many parts of the country. If you miss one or if you lose one, like, you know, the, we're watching this one get um, come off over and over. Well, the fish just keeps coming back. So uh, I firmly believe what happened in that case, especially given the size of that fish, um, when Mikey had that one on, uh, it, that was clearly a good size one. There was no question about it. And it came off, and I looked on the, the video to see how long it was um, after he dropped it that I hooked up, and it was just about one minute. Uh, that's not a lot of time at all. I've got video examples, and well, this, one, this is one of them where you know the fish for several minutes will follow along with the bait. Look how high up in the water column this thing is gone. Doesn't matter. The fish came right back, and I think that's what happened. He dropped that fish. I got right back down there. And um, I got the fish, so uh, that's just something to keep in mind. You miss a fish, you lose a fish, 
don't fret get get right back down uh, good chance you're gonna get it so with the fluke on it's always important to keep a bend in the rod and uh, both of my kids these last two trips they're not used to these rods they're used to fishing shallower water with lighter tackle there's always a bend in the rod that's not the case with these we need stiffer rods to bounce these heavier bucktails and boy when he had that fish on we were getting smacked with boat waves and it was just enough I think that the fish got slack and uh, it was able to get off so um, yep well, they'll learn there we go yep it's a fluke it's not a cow but just felt that that stop, you know, just something's there. Not like a sea robin. Yeah, that's probably illegal too. Yeah, it's definitely a keeper. Wouldn't swing him if we didn't already have plenty of meat. Is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right because I got it right next to me. But it's a nice one. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have commented to me that uh, they catch most of their fish on the teaser. Uh, uh, if that's happening, probably you're fishing a bucktail that's too heavy. I mean, first of all, you have to have a decent quality bucktail that's going to attract the fish. But after that, the next most important thing is um, that you have the right weight. And if you're fishing too heavy, the bucktail is going to have a very unnatural look to it, and you won't be getting hits on it. If you use the correct weight bucktail, it will have a nice, very natural fall to the bottom as you jig it and if it's a good looking bucktail to begin with uh, then you're going to find that you're going to probably catch um, almost 50 50 between the bucktail uh, and the teaser there's six inch berkeley gulp grubs uh, that we're tipping the teaser and the bucktail with so boy after mikey dropped that fish he hasn't caught another one so he's having a, a frustrating trip here but hey it's going to change Just keep, all right, keep that rod bent, that's yeah. all. You talk to me here, I gotta know what's going on. Here's our that's it, just real, no pump, just real. Nice job, big fish. Beauty, beauty. Yep. All right, I'm gonna take a picture of that and just freaking go home. Because <laughs> I was gonna only do one more drift. Dang. <laughs> it's a little hits. All right. Some of them felt pretty good too, but. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna end it with that. Gonna get a picture. Head for the barn. Of course, the problem with holding up a fish on the water to take a picture is that it just attracts other boats and they come right over and try to copy your drift. That's it. <laughs> Jigging jerks. Oh, that is nice. So, but that's 
It's a really nice one. It's not a doormat, but you know what? It's a... Nice job, nice one. See what happens when I'm not on the boat? Yeah, Sweeney gets the big one, huh? Yeah, I can. <laughs> and of course, those are my friends. And if you follow this channel, you've seen me fish uh, with them many times. Those are the Johns. And yeah, they've got a YouTube channel now that's called Jigging Jerks. So if you look up Jigging Jerks on YouTube, um, you'll find their videos. In fact, uh, you heard them mention they got a seven pounder and uh, yeah, they actually had an excellent trip this day at a different location and you could go over to their channel and watch that video. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.